Welcome to Saturday Morning Tutorials! Back off! So it, it doesn't actually show the hand at all. Yeah. This is what I think we should do. We should, instead of having it moving while it's animating on, I'll have my fingers spread, and then when the glove is animated on, then I'll move it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So then having, so you go shooting from the like glove on it. freeze frame backwards, and then up to that point. No, I don't have to freeze frame it. I think we should do your green screen idea. You want tracking markers? Uh. So I need a, I'm <laughs> This intimidating. Dude, it looks awesome. I'm Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> we shot this in three separate but equally important plates. Count them. One, two, three. The first two were Adrian's arm over a blue screen, one wearing the gauntlet and one without. We opted for a blue screen this time because the gold of the gauntlet would be easier to key against the blue than the green because green and yellow are similar hues. I don't think we've ever used blue before. You got that right. <laughs> The third plate is just Adrian <laughs> pretending he doesn't have any arms while I do some stuff in the background. There you are. We did shoot the blue screen plates in the same location to keep the lighting consistent, but having the blue screen there did pollute the colors a bit and made my arm look very pale and vampiric more so than usual. Fortunately, we did have a reference in the background plate that we could use to correct the colors. For color correcting, we like to use a levels effect and the show channel and color management settings button to color correct one color channel at a time. This is a fast way to get a near perfect result. Right. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> Holy We knew from the jump that we were gonna want a digital camera move for this shot, so we went ahead and set that up right now. The reason we did this now, even though it seems like it should be the last step, is because this is kind of a complicated effect, and we knew that there might be some trouble getting everything to line up. But with this camera move already done, we would know which parts would be off screen, and therefore we would know which parts we don't need to worry about getting perfect. This way, all of our hard work is actually on the screen. A lot of Marvel effects like this one here. They don't really hold up to the frame by frame scrutiny, but they look good in real time. So that's important to note. Make it look good in real time. Only weird people like us watch it frame by frame. Hmm. The effect itself can be split up into three separate parts. The tiny greebles, the animated components, and the gauntlet itself. Let's start with the greebles. By the way, greeble is a fancy word for a small random detail that you can use to make things look larger or more complex or or more interesting. Leave a comment below if we just taught you a new word. Say thank you. <laughs> On footage grade in the sci-fi section, there's some new effects called nanotech greebles. There are seven different options. You can choose a few of your favorites. Where do these even come from? Yeah, that's a good question. I think, uh, I think David made them. Guys, we don't rehearse these. <laughs> <laughs> The effect was built out using a 3DS Max particle system. I've set the particles to leave a trail behind them as they move through a turbulent environment. We then gave the particles a set of instructions. Firstly, their height value was locked so that they can only move horizontally. Another we gave them is that they can only travel in 45 degree angles, giving them a techie look like a circuit board. This means we can now generate new patterns in real time. A dozen components were then built up, which were then randomly duplicated along the wire. They were animated upwards through a matte material to give the simple appearance of them being melted into shape. Thanks a lot, David. That was really informative. Nice tricks. You can either place these onto your hand by uh, by hand, or we could use particular as a shortcut. Guess which one we did? Is, uh, we use particular. Whichever method you use, go ahead and pre-compose it. We still need to track this onto the arm. You know that guy Burrito, he knows about this. 
<laughs> Friends, so we've shown you before how to use Mocha, but in the newest update of After Effects, everything's all different now. Ah, uh, it's all different now. Here's how you can track with Mocha if you're on the 2019 version of After Effects or later. Talking to you, time travelers. Future freaks. Go back to the future where you belong. <laughs> <laughs> with <Please>. your arm. <laughs> Yo, did you have another joke? No, stop. Okay. <laughs> with your arm layer selected, come up to animation, track in Mocha. Alternatively, you could also apply Mocha as an effect and then click the Mocha button. It's the same thing. Button. 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 Once you're in Mocha, everything might look different than you are used to. At the top next to all the tools, there should be a menu where you can change your layout. It's frustrating at first. This isn't clearly labeled. We're using the classic layout because that's what we're used to. Old dogs don't learn new tricks. Yeah, woof, woof. Now you want to add several different X blinds to different parts of your arm and track them. Once those are done, you can close Mocha, but make sure to save your file or else you just wasted time. Back in After Effects, make a few new null objects, one for each part of the arm that you tracked. In the Mocha Effects panel, twirl down the Tracking Data section and create Track Data. Here you can turn on one of the splines you tracked earlier. In this menu, they are called Layers. Is that French? I think it might be. Change the Export option to Transform and the Layer to Export to. Change that to one of your nulls. Do this for each spline and now you'll have several nulls attached to your arm. Is Select that German? <laughs> 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 Select that pre-comp with the greebles and apply a solid composite effect. Use the puppet pin tool to add some pins in the same spot where your track nulls are. Now you can delete the solid composite effect. It was only there so the puppet pin tool wouldn't give us a weird funky funky mesh. We use the puppet pin null parenter script from Production Crate. Say that four times fast. Puppet pin null, but, but, yep, I'm not even gonna try it. And You're gonna cut that out, right? <laughs> Yeah, that's free from Production Crate. We used it to make some nulls that will be attached to these pins, and we parented those nulls to the track nulls. Which now, are parented to the track on the arm. That's true. <laughs> but now our Greeble comp is following the arm, finally. Create a duplicate of your arm layer and apply a simple choker effect with a negative value. In our case, it was negative 17. Why are you so negative all the time? Because I'm 17 and I'm angsty. <laughs> Use this as an alpha map for your greebles. Now they match the shape of your arm, but they stick out a little bit, so they look a bit more 3D. We can make them look a bit more 3D with a displacement map. Make another copy of the arm layer and apply a tint to it as well as a blur. Apply an inner glow layer style. Change the color to black and the blend mode to normal and then mess with the other settings until it looks a bit like this. Add a black solid below it and pre-comp both of those layers. This is now our displacement map. Back on the Greeble layer with the puppet pin tool, you can apply the displacement map effect using our displacement map layer as the map and turn it up until it starts to look a little bit more 3D. <laughs> You can put a slight drop shadow on this layer as well if you would like to make it look a little bit, a little, little bit, bit more, more 3D. 3D, or should I say warm? Get out of here. I like it. I like it. I love it. <laughs> I forgot what was the actual line. Need a hand? Back off. I'm armed. Talk to the hand. Get lit. You repulse me. Have an ice day. <laughs> We're not using that, but I like that. Now onto the larger components. Again, these can be found in the sci-fi section of Footage Crate. However, if you want a little more customization and you are a Production Crate a Pro member, you can find a link in the description to download these as OBJ sequences and drop those into Element or another 3D program to render those out at your own custom angles. If you are a 3D artist, you can just make your own. We're going to just use the pre-made ones from Footage Crate for now. Placing these in is gonna be pretty easy and fast. Just drop a bunch of them into your comp and rotate and scale them until they look good on your arm. And then go ahead and just parent each one to the track null that they are closest to. Finally, slide each of them in time until they match up with the small greeble layer. We wanted the lighting on these to look a little more cohesive with each other and the rest of the scene, so we pre-composed, pre-composed, <laughs> pre them together and drew two masks. One of the masks was thin and kind of in the middle, but more towards the front, and we drew another one around the edges. On that second one, we checked the invert box. 
effects. We then applied two exposure effects. One we turned up and the other one we turned down. Turned down for what? You'll see. <laughs> <laughs> in the effects menu on the timeline, we opened up the properties of both exposure effects and then clicked the plus sign next to the compositing option. You got the giggles. I do. <laughs> on the second exposure effect, which is the darker one, we set that to use the second mask. This gives us a highlight and a shadow. Now we just feather out the masks until they look au naturel. Ooh, is that English? Now we can move on to the gauntlet itself. Fun. Key that footage and line it up with the arm as best you can. It might be tricky. We actually ended up having to cut off the fingers and animate them into place to get them to match up. You guys, if you're gonna do an effect like this, just be aware that problems that you didn't expect might pop up and you'll have to deal with them. Yeah, I'd say uh, shoot multiple takes so you have multiple options. For sure. Yeah. Once that gauntlet is all lined up, pre-compose it. We'll make a simple map for it. We'll start with a white solid and apply a linear wipe transition to that. Over that will apply a solid composite effect. That's a solid composite. Change the color to black. Now we have a simple black and white transition. You guys like lame jokes? <laughs> Subscribe. We could put a turbulent displace effect over this to make it look a bit more organic. We can also put a couple of strategically placed bulge effects to make it look a bit more. Just like you did with your Facebook photos. <laughs> <laughs> what? I saw calling you out. <laughs> <laughs> Just gonna make it look a bit more 3D. And now here comes the cool part. Actually, if I, we, can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? You wanna do the cool part? Yeah. All right, go ahead. So, wait. If we apply a displacement map effect over all this, we're gonna use that gauntlet itself as the displacement map layer. Whoa, how's Mind that cool? blown. Since the gauntlet has different color panels, we can turn this up enough and it's gonna make the red and gold parts of the gauntlet look like they're coming in separately. Oh, that is cool. We got and tricks. Easy. You like Good tricks, job. we got tricks. This might be the new secret headquarters. That's actually really convenient. Ah. Why do I got that way? Chris? You good? Down here. We can make a second version of this mat with another linear wipe effect and use it to get just the edge of the gauntlet. On footage crate, there's some animated techie hexagon backgrounds. We can just grab one of those and shrink it down small and add a motion tile effect. And we can use that to drive a CC glass effect on just this edge to get some hexagon looking highlights. We can also apply an instance of CC plastic to get some additional highlights. Then we can make a duplicate of the gauntlet and its mat and make some changes to it and color the gauntlet a dark red. Using a dark inner glow like we did before on the arm displacement map, this is gonna give us an interior to the glove that we can use to make this effect look a little bit, a little bit more 3D. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> and a little bit more 3D. More 3D. <laughs> yeah. Now we just need to stack up all those layers and here we have the final effect. We add a shadow to the gauntlet as well as the arm itself to keep everything looking a little bit more 3D. And that's it for the animation of the gauntlet. Do you uh, want to see how we did the helmet? Whether or not you do, we're going to show you. In the description <laughs> you of this video, skip it. <laughs> in the description of this video, you will find a link to the 3D model and all the textures you need for this helmet. This is free for everybody. That's a good price. Download it. It's cool. It's a really cool model. Comes into Element uh, really easily. You can use it in C4D Lite. Do whatever you want with it. Adrian, what did you do with it? I brought this into Element and uh, dropped all the textures into their respective slots. Uh, if you want a War Machine look, you could just apply a metal texture to it. That's easy. We just track this really loosely. If you want a more detailed explanation of how to 3D track a head with an Element model, check out the Ghost Rider Flamin' Head tutorial. Whoa. Skulls are cool. Yeah, skulls are cool. <laughs> In a new comp, we'll make another simple mat. Start with a white solid and animate two black solids coming in from the top and the bottom to close at the middle. On an adjustment layer, we'll add a turbulent displace and a CC glass. Once again, using one of the hexagon backgrounds from Footage Crate to drive that glass effect. On top of that, we added a bulge and a, another turbulent displace effect to keep everything from looking too uniform. Go ahead and bring this comp into the comp with the Element 3D head, duplicate the Element layer, and on the duplicate, add the matte comp as a custom texture layer. In the Element interface, reset the texture on the helmet and then add the custom texture texture mat as our diffuse texture. And then on the model itself, change the mapping from UV to plain XY and hit OK. All right. On the element effect, come all the way down to the bottom and change the render mode to draft. Now we have a plain black and white animation we can use as a Luma inverted mat. 
To get that inner rim, we pre-composed the element, helmet, and its mat. In the pre-conf, we duplicated both of those layers and put an adjustment layer between them. So it goes mat, element, helmet, adjustment layer, mat, element, helmet. We applied a CC radio blur to that and set it to a fading zoom with a value of negative 20. We then applied a levels effect to that and set the channel to alpha. We then crushed the alpha channel to turn this into a solid layer rather than a blurry one. And then we used a sharpen to bring out the edges and tint it a little silverish. Because of the way we have this set up, we're able to go back into the matte comp and change it at any time and our animation will update. You can do this with any shape you can think of. Have you looked at the ball yet? Oh man, that was a long one, but a good one. Uh, yeah. Wake up, Adrian. We appreciate you making it all the way to the end of this video. This was like, this was by far our most requested. It was more requested than the Mystique effect, which was our old most requested effect. Since we know a lot of people want to see this, it would mean a lot to us if you would share this video with your friends if you enjoyed it. Don't share with your enemies though. You don't want to give them your powers. You can share it with your enemies if you thought it was bad. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. If you want to see how you can do an Iron Man heads up display effect, you can click the I to check that out. It's a rare example of an old production crate video that actually holds up and yeah. I, I actually checked it. It's good, don't worry. You can I like it, it too. Even though it's not a Saturday morning tutorial and I'm not in it, it's still <laughs> pretty good. Do you want to do a, the Iron Man repulsor effect itself? We have a few of those on footage crate as well. Try using them in conjunction with our new crate camera shake a script to add some realistic jolts of motion. All of the sound effects in this sketch are available in the link in the description. Fun fact, Chris made some of those sounds with his mouth. Show us. All right, here's another. How's that? I'm going to be honest with you. I did not expect those to be good, but they were. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> the batteries fell out. <laughs> hey, creators, I got a question for you. Avengers 1 was awesome. Avengers 2, super awesome. No, I didn't like Avengers 2. Really? I thought it was boring. Well, nobody asked you. Infinity I didn't War think was I asked dope. you earlier. Yeah, <laughs> it was cool. What is going to happen in the next Infinity War? I am super curious. And obviously, we're inspired a lot by Marvel movies. So we want to know. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Chris, do you know what the new, the next Avengers movie is going to be called? Is it uh, Captain Marvel? No, the Avengers movie. Oh, it's uh, Infinity War. Um, watch Thanos farm. You're gonna look like a fool. It's called Avengers Endgame. I like mine more. All right, everyone. Adrian and I have been busy setting up our new HQ. Things are looking good and you look good too. Make, Keep it easy. Make it awesome. Oh, that's better, yeah. Make it awesome. <laughs> Later, crater. Nice, good strong ending. <laughs> hey guys, it's me again, Adrian from productioncrate.com. If you need a hand, you can check out either of these videos. And if you want to subscribe, that won't do you any arm. Like harm, get it? No, no I don't. All right, that was good. <laughs> Let's use that. <laughs>